Hey everybody, we're in York, gonna be checking out the aircraft carrier Intrepid, right behind me. Uh, gonna take a tour and see what life was like and all the airplanes and things on display here. So let's go check out the carrier. There's a lot of steps up to get onto the ship. You can see, right over here is the USS Growler submarine that you can tour that's included with the admission to the Intrepid. Admission to the Intrepid is about $33 as of the time I'm shooting this. Uh, you can get some discounts like two for one kind of thing sometimes online if you're coming with multiple people. Uh, check the website for the latest information. You can also take guided tours. They offer several different guided tours either the ship, the ship during World War II, or at the end of the pier here you can tour the Concorde. The Concorde guided tour is about another 15 or $20 for that. Generally, it's highly recommended. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to be doing that. To check the website for latest information. But 33 gets you the submarine, the space shuttle, and the Intrepid itself. Just entered the hangar deck here. So before we get into the ship, here's a pretty amazing Lego version of the Intrepid. 250,000 pieces. It's four feet at the widest point of the flight deck, and it weighs 550 pounds. Pretty amazing. Pretty neat. So we are on the hangar deck, which is part of the museum. But this would have been where they stored all the aircraft and taken them up on the elevators to the flight deck. The Highline chair that was used to transfer sailors between ships. They would have to run parallel and run a cable or rope across and they would sit in this chair and transfer between the ship's dental chair. It says they performed 800 to 1,000 procedures each month. So it looks like with the Intrepid we're going to be on the hangar deck and the flight deck. And we're not going to be touring down. They do have a guided tour or a, uh, a hard, what they call hard hat tour. Um, I think those are starting up in the next couple of days. And those are going to take you below decks to places you don't normally see on this particular uh, carrier. I did see another carrier in Charleston. I can't remember exactly which one that was. Uh, but that one I was able to go below decks and see a lot of different things. So there's quite a few displays and... Uh, you can see there's various touch screen information that gives you a lot of history or what things were like, what life was like on the ship. Pictures and history of the aircraft carriers, not just the Intrepid, but aircraft carriers in general. And you can see this pretty much continues all the way throughout the hangar deck. And a diary from one of the sailors of the Intrepid. Here, pretty cool, a uh, Thanksgiving Day menu.
This display looks at uh, pilots aboard the Intrepid and some of their gear. You see a uh, May West or Life Vest flight suit. This is the Intrepid had 18 pilots, at least 18 pilots, who became aces. There's some uh, video and some uh, practical effects, I guess, here for showing what uh, what happens when there's an emergency on a carrier. Check out the pilot's escalator. This is the escalator would take the pilots up to the flight deck. And this is a aircraft fueling station. The colored pipes are so that the sailors can tell exactly what kind of fluid any particular pipe carriers. The number of fueling stations and their exact location on the ship changed over the years. And after the Vietnam War, in about 74, the Intrepid was decommissioned, could not handle some of the more modern aircraft, and was being replaced by newer aircraft carriers. The Intrepid was actually used as a primary recovery vessel for many NASA Mercury and Gemini missions. There were four propellers on the Intrepid, and according to the plaque, they tried to remove the Intrepid from dry dock uh, for repairs in 2006, but uh, the propellers have become completely stuck in the mud, and it took them a month before they were able to clear the propellers and tow the Intrepid away. And during that dry dock 2007, all four propellers were removed. So this ship's not going anywhere. So there's the uh, landing recovery system that pilots could see as they were approaching the aircraft carrier to land. There's a ball turret that was on the back of the aircraft. Twice in 1944 and twice in 90, 1945. The Intrepid was attacked by kamikaze pilots. And 99 crew members were lost during that time. And they are memorialized here on this wall. This is a, sort of like a kid's area where kids can explore and learn what it was like to be in aircraft or things like that. And they do have this little thing recurring regularly, Operation Slumber, where kids can spend the night in the hangar deck of the aircraft carrier and they have special educational things that kids can enjoy. And in the back of this uh, exploration area, the back of the ship, you can also find the simulator and the 4D film experience, both of which are extra chargers. So if you are hungry on board the ship, they do have a cafeteria, some ice cream, and some hot food. assortment of pastries and cereal, some pre-made sandwiches. It's kind of expensive. They didn't really let you bring some food on the ship. So if you've got something that you have made or you bought some snacks or something or water on the ship, you can bring that with you. You just have to eat it here in this marketplace. You can't eat anywhere else on the ship. So this is the food marketplace. There are some exhibits down below. And uh, this is being restored, a machine shop on the ship, one of several machine shops that are on the ship. Some more of the machine shop here. And hatches leading to further below decks. This is the galley from 1961, typical departure from Norfolk, Virginia. Food would be served 15 hours a day. 7,500 meals daily. 
3,000 men on the ship. And Navy recipes made 100 portions so they could figure out exactly how much of everything they needed. Interesting, here they're talking about renovating a mess that they had orange and yellow colors and they ended up renovating and sort of redesigning and creating a little bit of this look that you're seeing an example of here. They blended the different military paints and actually won a Navy Award for changing the decoration and most of the sailors apparently seemed to like it. And here's a six, six weeks menu cycle on the Intrepid. Example of crew berthing area. So I also have some examples of the different boardrooms as well as officers mess. So they just got a few examples down here. They've generally got most of the lower decks off, closed off, but they have a few examples of what life was like. Other aircraft carriers you will be able to see a little bit more. Take the uh, elevator up to the flight deck. And here we are arriving on the flight deck. And a bit of the New York skyline in the background. Here's the uh, port side elevator, aircraft elevator. It actually had not been working since 1974, decommissioned. And they uh, they actually made it working again and uh, they restored it in 2008 so that you can see what the elevator looks like working, I guess. They're gonna demonstrate it here in a few moments. So now we are on the aircraft elevator and we're going down a little bit. If you take a look behind me, you'll see a garage door. That's because the hangar deck is the ship's garage. Right now, if you notice that we're moving in, it's a very interesting hydraulic way of moving. When this was not being used for aircraft, the sailors used the front, the front elevator to have basketball games and volleyball games and movie there. This particular one here was used as a diving board at the beach in sailing. When the ship was stuck, they would jump off the side, go swimming, and come back. So the interesting thing about the hydraulic movement is this was state-of-the-art technology. In 1944, the Radio City Music Hall Rockets used this technology for their stages to come up and dance and sing. The Navy used that technology for these aircraft elevators. That's pretty cool. I toured a lot of different ships, but I've never ridden on an aircraft elevator. So went down a little bit where you could see the doors to the hangar and uh, came back up to the flight deck. Very interesting. Our tour guide said that uh, initially they were covered with wood like this, but the kamikaze pilots were setting it on fire, so they changed it to steel later. But they would uh, lower these down and might play basketball or volleyball, lower these down, dive into the water, and use them recreationally when they weren't uh, in combat. side of the ship, we got a sample Mercury Gemini spacecraft being retrieved. And right here on the starboard side of the ship, you can see another aircraft elevator here. This one obviously not in service. So let's uh, check out the navigation and flag bridge. Climb these ladders to the navigation bridge level. Oh, 
We're in our officer's cabin up in the forecastle. And another set of steep stairs. This would have been the chart house. Plotter navigation. And right behind the main bridge would have been the captain's sea cabin. And as always, watch your step over the hatches. So at zero degrees, you're going straight ahead. Pilot house. Now, if you were the helmsman, you would just be watching these compasses here, and keeping the ship on. Another look at the officer's bunk. Another look at the at the bridge. Nice overview of the flight deck from up here by the bridge. I always find it very fascinating to find out how these ships worked and to talk to some of the crew members that are often staffed on these ships to talk about uh, their past experiences. Walk down backwards, very steep stairs. Yeah, you can see very steep stairs. When it was up in the navigation bridge, they had a uh, Ken Chin, who was a structural aviation hydraulics mechanic on the Hancock. And uh, thanks to him, it was really cool to talk about the ship and a little bit of his experiences on board the aircraft. If you ever tour one of these ships, talk to some of the vets who may be there uh, that served on that ship or just served the general and have some knowledge. It's very interesting to hear some of their experiences and background and history. Now this is the uh, flag bridge here. When the Intrepid was built, the flag bridge and navigation bridge were open to the elements. They enclosed two open bridges during modernization that took place in the early 50s. It's very nice to finally get these areas enclosed. the hatch and the fly pilot would operate in here and if they were dealing with a group of escort ships they do a lot of communicating from here and exiting back down to the flight deck The uh, exiting the ship back down to the pier. This is the this is the elevator that was, that is now operational, and we rode that I don't know two thirds of the way down, where you could see where the aircraft doors were. So that is working now, and a couple of times during the day, they will uh, actually let you climb on it and watch it operate. All right, that's going to be all from the Intrepid. Hope you enjoyed the tour of the USS Intrepid, looking at some of the history, some of the aircraft. It's a great time. If you want to check it out, check out their website. Lots of good information there on visiting, and I uh, had a great time here. Thanks for watching, and remember, kids, have a good time all the time.